a very good morning my dear friends and namaste it's uh, wonderful to connect with all of you today and uh, today is the day 4 of our web series and today is a very very exciting day and the reason why i have it, why i call it as a very exciting day is uh, today we are going to look into a very very hands on approach on how you can use data analytics no doubt every day by day we are slowly moving into the transition we are slowly understanding step by step what happened so day 1 we understood what is the concepts day 2 we looked into excel day 3 we looked into advanced excel and today we are in day 4 and today we are going to look into how you can use data analytics functions using the power of cat tools correct so computer assisted audit tools and techniques so cat tools basically what we are going to use today so today's session is going to be very exciting and to you know to bring in that sort of a spirit and to bring in that sort of a energy we require a wonderful speaker and today with me i have ca abdul rafiq or i popularly call him as rafiq sir so rafiq sir has been a veteran in this profession of uh, data analytics and over the years he has amassed so much amount of knowledge in this space that you give him any sort of a problem he has a direction how you should be approaching that particular problem and that is something which i really liked about him and he has been my mentor and i in fact i i am privileged that you know i uh, you know he mentors me that he adds a lot of value added insights about how profession and how you should be looking into this field of technology so to quick, give a quick introduction to rafiq sir he passed the ca final exam in 1985 and you know in the year 1995 he did his cisa which is from the isaka usa he has an expertise on data analytics business intelligence and uh, uh, you know a governance framework by name cobit which most of you are aware of he has an experience in multiple roles for, you know in the roles of a cfo cio it consultant auditor software architect you know cobit trainer so you you name anything on technology he has a perspective on it so that is something really really nice and he has done wonderful workshops when it comes to data analytics or it audit or cat tools or cobit and not just in india across various chapters of isaka in 14 different countries more than 14 different countries and he is one of the senior most faculty of the disa course of icai uh, probably he was one of the pioneers who brought in the course of uh, disa for our institute uh, and he's contributed to a lot of publications articles anything uh, you know more, very uh, various publications on it when it comes to icai and general uh, domain he has designed and delivered courses on is audit he is a past member of the 12 member cobit 5 task force of the you know which designed cobit 5 so that itself is such a wonderful thing at an international perspective he is an expert reviewer for cobit 2019 which just came up uh, a few uh, uh, probably a year uh, a year back and he is a chief ar architect of various data analytics solutions for uh, auditors and he's developed a few tools called as ecat tcat e to tally soft softcat procat you know various things like this so on that note i would like to warmly welcome uh, rafiq sir and uh, who's uh, the current managing director who's currently in the managing director of uh, winsor infotech and he will take us through the data analytics journey from a cat tool perspective and he will take us through how practically we can get started with data analytics over to you sir thank you so much thank you narsimha Natsimman, as always, is very generous in his praise. Now he was talking about my journey of making presentations across 14 countries, and maybe I have covered about 100 countries in my career, about more than 25, 35 uh, years. Whereas I think if you look at the lockdown period, about 40 days, I think Natsimman has already traversed uh, more than 10 countries and maybe about 50 cities through his webinars. So he has converted this COVID from a challenge to an opportunity, and he has gone uh, worldwide. so this shows you the pace at which you can keep growing i might have taken 25 years to go to 14 countries but narsimhan has already covered this in 14 days okay let's get started now the perspective of my presentation is to give you an overview of what data analytics is all about and specifically using cat tools and i want to take you into the future in terms of what the road ahead and why do we need to reskill ourselves using the data analytics tools and this i am going to use a specific software uh, for the purpose of the demo i am not here to market the software but i want you to understand the concept you can use the same concept applied in python applied in r applied in excel or there could be software solutions also which have this concept 
I'm going to touch on about 25 to 30 uh, functions, primarily from the perspective of data analytics. Let's get started. I'm delighted to be here once again doing this webinar for uh, Natsiman. And I'm really happy to see there are a lot of you available here. Some of you might have already attended many of my presentations. And every time I try to bring in a new perspective. Because for me, the first and most important thing is that we should be able to grow. And when I'm making any presentation, my primary objective is how can I simplify the concepts so it becomes easier to adopt. There are four parts of my presentation. First, we are going to ask some key questions pertaining to data analytics, especially in the context of CAD tools. Second, we are going to look at what are the strategies and steps we can adopt for using data analytics. Third, this is where I'm going to spend a significant amount of time where you're going to have walkthrough and demo of two software. I'll show you the software with specific functions to show you the simplicity and the power of data analytics software to demonstrate that if you know how to use Excel, you can also master data analytics tools. And the fourth one, I'd like to leave you with some tips and tricks based on my experience. Now let's get started with the key questions of data analytics. There's one interesting slide which most of the speakers would have used. The three useful sets for professionals. One is the mindset. Second is the skill set. Third is the tool set. Now, I want to explain this concept by three short stories, okay, each covering this concept, and then we'll discuss this further. If you can get the moral of the stories, then I'm sure you get why I'm talking about the importance and relevance of data analytics. Let's first talk about mindset. Let me take you back uh, more than 1,000, maybe 5,000 years ago. A young mother got her young child to a great rishi. Now, those times there was a guru class system. She brought the young child and told this guru, who was a famous astrologer also, to take her child as a disciple under him. The guru, being a famous astrologer, asked the child to show the palm. When he looked at the palm, he found this child was not having the line of education in his palm. So he told the mother, sorry, I cannot take your child because this child doesn't have the line of education. So all the time he's going to spend with me is going to be a waste. So it's better that you put him in some other area. The mother was disappointed. She casualed and requested again and again. The Rishi Guru did not relent. So she went away disappointed. After two weeks, this young boy came again alone to the Rishi and asked him, Guruji, I want to become your disciple. The Guru looked at the boy and said, last time you had come with your mother. Now why have you come again? I've already told you, I don't change my decision. The young boy opened his arms and showed it to the Guru and said, Guruji, you said line of education, why don't you look at it again? And when the Guru looked at the boy's palm, he was surprised there was a line of education. He said, I distinctly remember this line was not there when I saw you last time. The end boy said, yes, Guruji, you told me this is the place where the line of education was supposed to be. <coughs> so I went back. I was very much this time interested in having education. So I cut my palm lightly so that the line of education now appears. The Swamiji smiled and said, although you are not destined to have education, considering your determination, you will definitely will have education, you will become a disciple. And this young boy later on to be, went on to become the greatest grammarian of Sanskrit language and he was called Panini. Now this is all about mindset. We need to have the right mindset because mindset can change destinies. I remember Swami Chinmananda used to say, what you meet in life is destiny, how you overcome it is your free will. Next, now let's go to the next skill, next set, which is the skill set. All of us as professionals have different skill sets of varying degrees, depending on your our area of experience and expertise and the amount of time and effort we have spent. Let me go back, take you back, uh, maybe another 4,000, 5,000 years back, during the time of Mahabharata, the Arjuna and his guru was Dronacharya. There was a young poor boy 
called A. Columbia, who wanted to become disciple of Dronacharya. So he went to Dronacharya and told him that to take him as a disciple. Now, when the Guru Dronacharya saw A. Columbia's skills, he found that this fellow could beat his student Arjuna. So he told him, I cannot take your student because I treat, uh, train only Kshatriya. This young boy, Ekalabya, was very much disappointed. He went back, made an image of Dronacharya, kept it in the forest, and began training himself, observing how Dronacharya used to train. After some period of time, he found that he had become very skilled. And later on, when Dronacharya met, and uh, he asked, how could you become skilled? Although there are no guru, he said, you were always present with me in the form of an image, and I used that. Okay, later on, another part of the story is there where Dronacharya asked him to give the gift and uh, he asked the thumb to be given as a gift and Dronach uh, Ekalavya unhesitatingly cut his thumb and gave it off. Which means all the skill set he acquired, he sacrificed at the altar of his group. Now, this is about skill set. So, what does, the, what does the moral of the story show? That you can develop skill sets if you are prepared to spend the time and effort. Now, in the modern era, we have one great guru and that is the Google Guru. And under Google Guru, we have the YouTube Guru. We also have WhatsApp University. We also have Instagram Institute. Institute. We have the Facebook uh, Academy. Like that, we have multiple things. It's important that you choose the right Guru and know how to ask the right questions. So there is no dearth of knowledge if you are prepared to spend the time. This is about the skill set. Now let's come to the tool set. Tool set, every professional has a set of tools. Let me take you back again to the times of Ramayana. After the war was over, Hanuman went back to his hometown to visit his mother. And he was narrating the story of what all happened in the Ramayana, in the war with Ravana and how he was killed. His mother wondered and told him, Hanuman, you know your power with a, just a sweep of your tail, you could have removed the thing entire Sri Lankan army and Hanuman paused and said yes but he said nobody told me to do so so what does this show that Hanuman had the tools he had the capabilities but the guru or the master did not ask him to use the tools they went the hard way and fought the battle maybe there's another reason for this but the story demonstrates that it's not just enough to have the tools you also need to use the right tools. In the modern age, when technology is available in abundance, it's important that we have the right mindset to get started. Second, we should know how to practice and use these tools to develop our skills so that we can practically learn how to implement. Like Baba Ramdev says, yog karne se hota hai. Technology also you learn by doing, not just by reading. So this gives you the context. So data analytics requires all the three sets. Quite often I come across a lot of gurus, Excel gurus and so many other gurus. Everyone has got expertise in some particular software and they feel that software is the ultimate. But what you need to remember, that every tool set has its own limitations, has its own, own objectives. So it's important that you know what tool to use well. Now let's get started. Let's look at some concepts pertaining to the mindset. They say it's important that we should stop talking about problems and start thinking of solutions. Now our perspective should be let problems come from anywhere, let solutions come from you. As a chartered accountant, we have to change our mindset from the compliance oriented fault finder approach to a solution oriented approach. What enterprises require now is solutions to their current problems. Now, we need to ask this question, are you a fault finder? Are you a solution provider? Similarly, if you look at another perspective of mindset, growth, they say, is your willingness to give up what you are to become who you can be. Without give up, there is no go up. Now, currently, you might be busy in doing certain tasks and functions, in doing certain professional jobs. You need to look at the future and then decide, is this what you want to continue five years from now, 10 years from now? What you should be willing to give up because finally we have got 24 hours in a day. 
what is that you want to focus on so you should be clear about that so that you can start focusing on what is most important for you so unless you give up you cannot go up. so you need to decide what you want to give up now the question you need to ask is are you prepared to give up to go up and what is that you are prepared to give up they say all balloons go up you must heard of the said famous story when a black young boy came to a balloon seller and asked him pointing to one particular balloon uh, does the black balloon fly and the balloon seller looked at this black young boy and told him it's not the color of the balloon it's what inside the balloon which makes it fly as chartered accountants it's not our designation but what we are able to do with the skills we have to go up in our career and provide value addition to our clients so they say all balloons go up now it's important to decide what do we want to put inside our head so that it can come as an output and value to our clients what skills do you need to go up in your professional career this is where you need to relook and rethink and re-strategize about your future professional career this is a vision your vision should be broad enough and the vision should not only focus on work but life in general so why wait for the covid to change we know covid has come it is going to be there for some time but we know very well that uh, in fact uh, in our religion they say when allah created the world he also created what is the destiny when he created the disease he also created the cure for that the only question is there is a testing period through which we go through and we'll be able to identify how we are able to fare up to this so the cure is already decided the only question is when are we going to discover it first it's important if you remember the whole context of my presentation so far i spent 10 minutes to prepare you to the context because once you get the context right once you get the mindset right which is the most important thing then the skill set and the tools that can follow so most important thing is first digitize your thinking and then automate the process and then you will be able to create your own new digital future most of the times i found ceas tend to buy software as a tool and deploy it and think that is a panacea for all the problems software solutions or it solutions do not solve problems first you need to put a process in place and then you need to automate the process i have come across many cas who bought the software but they don't have a process for using the software they don't know what specific test they want to perform for example i have come across ca firms who got a beautiful checklist which talks about what is to be done in each of the areas for example fix assets bills receivable bills payable for each of the areas they got a checklist what is to be done and the most important ingredient which is missing how it is to be done is what is missing so once that how is missing then it becomes ad hoc every person who does the audit does the work in their own way which is not really repeatable and which is not really uh, you can say demonstrable from the point of the peer review so if you want to bring in value addition it's important that you standardize the process for each type of an assignment you need to develop a checklist for each type of checklist you need to develop the specific audit test you are going to perform and what tools and techniques you are going to perform how the tests are going to perform you should train your staff and also ensure that the results are monitored and reviewed now let's come to the six key questions i'm going to quickly answer some of the answers for these questions of data analytics some of you may be already knowing these are the six famous questions which you need to ask for in learning any subject what is data analytics let's get the context data analytics is all about asking intelligent questions to the digital data <coughs> using the right tools and techniques based on your domain knowledge and skills now what is important to you must have remembered a tool a fool with a tool is still a fool so when you want to use data analytics it's not about giving the most powerful software it's about the person having the domain knowledge and skill sets that's why i always say the manager or the partner has to implement a standard process based on the domain knowledge based on the expertise and experience of the specific clients and develop the specific audit test so that the audit objectives are achieved or the compliance objectives are achieved so it's not just about having the right tools and techniques but it is also about demonstrating or using your domain knowledge and skills to develop this right tools and techniques now nasiman also talked about this we are in an era of data 
deluge. We are surrounded by data, but we are starving for information or we are starving for insects. Using data analytics, you can harvest the power of data and get insights. One of the questions which is commonly asked, as CAs, are they data analysts or data scientists? I think there should not be any doubt about this question. With the domain knowledge and skills we have, we are most suitable to be data analysts. Data scientist is the prerogative of the engineering community or the development community. So in our case, wherever we are looking at business oriented solutions, we are looking at how we use the specific tools and solutions without becoming programmers so that we can develop insights and provide value, value addition to the management. Data scientist is a separate field. This is from the engineering perspective who develop the automated solutions or who use programming languages like Python and R to become data scientists. I'm not saying as a CA you cannot become a data scientist, but you should know that this is the this is the area of specialization. If you are interested, first I'd suggest first become a data analyst and then you want to develop your own solutions, then you can become data scientist. For example, in the last 10 years, we might have developed so many software solutions, but I have not written a single line of code. I don't know coding. I don't know programming, but I know what is the business context. So I design the solution, give them the context, give them the logic and I walk through the program to check whether the logic is correct and it's delivering results. And that is what being a data analyst. If I'm sitting and doing the coding, like for example, we had Mr. Venugopal yesterday. Now, if you give any problem to Venugopal, he's such an expert in Excel that he says, yes, anything I can do in macro. You just give him the time, he'll do the coding himself. Nobody can do, he only will sit and do the coding and he'll develop the solution and give that. Now, that is a perspective, not only for data analyst, but is also acting like a data analyst, a data scientist. Okay, so I think the distinction is clear. Now let's go ahead. Where can we use data analytics? Wherever digital data is available, in whatever format you can perform data analytics, and that can be used for data analysis or business intelligence or compliance assurance of a fraud investigation. Now this is a very, very important slide. Why should we use data analytics? They say there are three I's, and that is inferring insights from information. This is fundamentally the objective of using data analytics. Another important context I want you to know, what is data analytics all about? It's about applying thought to technology. So it's not just about data which is available, what insights you can gather by applying your domain knowledge and skills, by applying your thinking to the technology, using specific tools and techniques, it, what is the result of data analytics? Now let's look at some strategies and steps you need to adopt. Maybe I'll spend about five to 10 minutes and then we'll go to the de demo, where in the demo, I want to sp spend about probably 50 to 60 minutes giving you a quick walkthrough of specific tools and techniques. When to use data analytics? Now this should be clear. What will be the assignment? What will be the format of data? Now yesterday we talked about structured data and unstructured data. Data analytics is primarily used for structured data. Now here we are not talking about unstructured data. Maybe later on that we can look at once you become specialist, then you can also look at using unstructured data. For unstructured data also, there are various tools and techniques available. For example, the tweets which are there, uh, which are posted. Can you analyze the tweets based on that, look at what are the positive responses for a particular product? Similarly, let's say the Facebook post, Facebook posts which are there. Uh, can you run through the Facebook post and look at what is the trend uh, as far as the Facebook posting is concerned? Who's talking for and against a particular individual or against a particular concept or philosophy? And that's what I think there's one company who did and they got into problems using the Facebook data. So that is unstructured data. Here we're not talking about unstructured data. We are primarily talking about structured data. So if data is available in a digital format, then you can perform assurance, compliance, or consulting assignment using the data analytics. Now, how to use data analytics? Now, this is the most commonly used phrase, that data is the new oil. We agree, data is the new oil. Now, if you want to just look at the power of this data, just look at the valuation for Google, or Facebook, or for WhatsApp. What is that we give them this valuation? They don't so have so much of physical property or physical assets. What they have is nothing but the data. Not only the data, 
they have an information system through which they can harness the power of data. So what is most important, especially from a CA perspective, is do we know how to unlock the power of this data? So this is where you can use data analytics as the engine to use the power of data. For example, you may have the best fuel, but you also need to have the car with the right engine to be able to use the right fuel and take you to your destination. Now, this, I think, demonstrates the effectiveness of technology. I have looked at it from two perspectives. If you see here, here we're talking about technology and work done. Now, if you see here, if you look at the impact of COVID, COVID, anyone who used to, COVID, uh, sorry, anyone who used technology effectively, I think it did not impact them in a big way. For example, if you look at Wipro, they declared the financial annual results within the specific time. For them, if you go to the website, they say 93% of uh, staff are working from home. There is no impact on the work. Similarly, if you look at uh, so many companies who are uh, technology oriented companies, they just had to make a small shift and allow employees and empower them to work from home and they're able to operate. Similarly, I was talking to many CA firms and there are CA firms who are highly technology oriented and there are CA firms who are not technology oriented. Now I found CA firms who are not technology oriented. So when I asked them, uh, they said, yeah, model, sir, we have given uh, leave to staff because we cannot do anything. Second thing, the clients are also not ready. They don't have anything. So you need to remember one important thing. This is where you need to study uh, your current systems and processes, the type of work you're doing. You need to remember one fundamental principle. If the work is routine or repetitive, then you find that you can automate it. And the higher the level of automation you can do, the higher will be the benefit for you. Let's now come to specifics and look at what are the services provided by CA. Now, broadly, we can put them into five buckets. It could be pertaining to process outsourcing, regulatory compliances, audit and assurance, consulting advisory, litigation and assessment. These are the broad areas. Now, I want to ask you a question. Where do you think data analytics could be used? Is it applicable in any specific area or is it applicable in all the areas? Just think, most of you would be using some or the other tool in each of these areas. I think the answer should be very distinct and clear that we can use data analytics in each of these areas. But the level of usage would vary. Mostly, if you look at audit and insurance, this is where data analytics could be extensively used. Third, regulatory compliance also. Second, data uh, regulatory compliance also data analytics would be extensively used. In process outsourcing also, this could be the third category where we can use data analytics for the purpose of generating various types of reports. Consulting advisory, it's mostly uh, skill-based. This maybe data analytics could be used to a lesser extent. Litigation assessment, here also we've got various types of software available, automated solutions available. You can do various analysis, but it's more skill-based. The litigation assessment would probably come under the file level. So it means data analytics or automated solutions could be used in all these areas, but the level of implementation, the level of usage would vary depending on the area. Now let's look at the specific area of work and see where we can use data analytics. Broadly, we can bucket the type of work we do into four areas. Office management systems, where you look at client work and staff, accounting and finance, MIS or CFO, or we look at compliances, we can also do consulting or filing, or we can look at assurance type to your management. Now, can you tell me where can we use data analytics? I think the answer is what we gave earlier. Data analytics could be used in all these areas. Now, if you look at specific examples, what software solutions are available for data analytics? In accounting finance, if you're using a solution, for example, let's say you're using SAP or you're using QuickBooks or you're using Tally, most of the accounting software also have reporting and queries. Using the reports and queries, we can generate various types of reports and perform data analytics. In the case of office automation, for example, you've got MS Excel, which is an excellent tool. Okay, you also got various utility software. You also got Power BI. This also could be used for data analytics. And then we have specialized software. The data analytics software is also called as computer trusted audit techniques and tools, which could be used as an audit to Excel. This is one type of solution. This is what I want to demonstrate. There are also special data analytics software with their own database, which can be installed 
and we can import the data from various types of uh, platforms. For example, it could be Excel or it could be text format or it could be any database format. You can import the data into the data analytics software and you can perform specific data analytics function. What is the data analytics function? I'll come to it a little later. And then we have high-end statistical software which can be used for high-end data mining and data warehousing. Here we can also use uh, statistical analysis tools like we have SAS. We also have Python, R, 9. These are all high-end data analytics software tools. Many of these are also available as open-ended open uh, programming solution, which means if you've got the expertise in the time, you can spend time and develop expertise in this area. But now, the basic question you need to ask is, do you want to become a programmer? You are, are you specialized in developing solutions for uh, using the programming languages? If that is the area of interest, then definitely take a Python or R, or to some extent as required, you learn so that you can guide your team to be able to use it when required. I've also come across CS for using Python R to some extent, or Lime to some extent. So you can use depending on this, but I'm saying this is not a fundamental requirement. As a CA, it's important you should know how to use the relevant tools as required. Now, data analytics we know is growing in the growing digital age. Now, the fundamental question we need to ask is, is there a better way? And what is the better way? Can we provide assurance, ensure compliance and provide valuation? Can we be more productive, more effective and more timely? The answer is a definite yes. If you know how to harness the power of data analytics, you can definitely provide better assurance for your clients with a greater assurance for you because you know that you actually navigated through the digital data and come out with the analysis which is required which gives you assurance to the client and validation to the client and you also have an assurance that you have done your job using your skills using the tools and you have covered the data extensively so that you know that you have the satisfaction of drilling and mining through the data to provide insights as required. You must have seen the advertisement. An actor prepares. Anupam Kher has got an institute where he talks about he teaches acting skills. Actor prepares. So any actor, famous actor, if you see, they spend time in preparing for the role. They immerse themselves in that role and become the character. And when they act, it doesn't look they're acting. They actually become the character. Now, if you are using data analyst, I think you should remember that data analyst also prepares. As an auditor, if you're providing compliance or assurance or consulting services, it's important that you prepare. How do you prepare? You need to understand the business processes. You need to understand the technology architecture. You need to understand in the technology, what is the hardware, what is the system software, what is the database, and primarily, what is the application software they're using, and what is the format in which the data is available. What are the key business processes? What are the business controls which are available? And then based on the business objectives, what tools are required to be able to perform this role? Every professional has certain tool sets. For example, if you look at a nurse, she has got certain tools. If you look at a doctor, he's got certain tools. If you look at a surgeon, he's got his own tools. Now, if you give a knife to a doctor, he cannot perform surgery. Only surgeon can perform surgery. I was talking to a famous surgeon in Dubai, whom I met last month, last year, and uh, I complimented him. I told him that maybe when I was young, I wanted to become a doctor. I couldn't. I'm really thrilled to know and meet you because he's a famous uh, doctor, cardiac surgeon, and who specializes in child. And he was telling in a very simple way: See, only we cut and stitch. God does the healing. Now that left me pondering. A tailor also cuts and stitches. A surgeon also cuts and stitches. What are the difference in the skill set? That's what we need to analyze. You may give the data and using Excel, you can perform analysis. You may give the data analyst to me and using my tools, I can perform a different types of analysis. You may give the same data to a data scientist. The data scientist will perform analysis in different way. But what is most important is, are you providing the relevant information? Are you providing the relevant insights? For that, a data analyst has to prepare. There's an interesting analogy I came across, which I thought I'll share with you. Just look at a professional. If you look at a watchman, he's got a whistle. He doesn't, he may not even have a lathe. A policeman has got a lathe. A sub-inspector has a gun. A soldier has got a rifle. But if you compare to all these guys, if you look at a commando, what does a commando have? 
as a tool set. He may have a knife. First of all, he's trained. He may be, he can use his hands and uh, body itself as a, as, a, as a weapon of destruction. He can kill people with his bare hands. Because he's well trained. Second, he's got a knife. He may have a gun. He may have AK-47. He may have a grenade. He may have so many things. So as a commando, he uses the required tools to accomplish the mission. As a data analyst, we need to ask, what are my tools? Am I a policeman with a lathi? Or a watchman with a dusan, with a whistle, or an inspector with a gun, or I'm a data analyst commando. What do you think is the best role? As a CA, especially most of you are partners or owners of the firm, I think it's important that you need to consider yourself as a data analyst commando. It's not necessary you should know all the technology, but you should know how to use the relevant technology as and when required. Because if you learn how to use specific tools and techniques, you can also train your staff to be able to use them. If you look at an actor prepares or data analyst prepares, I think Narsimhan also showed this, you need to first prepare the data for analysis. So there are some 11 checks for good data. For example, if you because we are dealing with structured data, we need to ensure the data is available in standard format. Most of the cases, people who have bought out software solutions, we find one of the problems they face is they're getting errors. And I find that, okay, the first row is blank, all the columns are repeated, the columns are blank, there are duplicate readings. And these are all the issues which we find that we can navigate through this in Excel. But if you want to do data analysis, I think these are the 11 checks for the good data which you ensure that you prepare the data in a proper format. So the most critical time you spend before you analyze the data is to prepare the data for evaluation. And that is what is called as curating the data. Now, this is another key point which I want to emphasize again. If you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. Now, I want you to ask you, my friends, now you're doing tax audit. Do you have standard process for doing the tax audit? And is it repeatable? If you give the checklist to your staff and the same checklist is given to other staff, can you ensure that you get the same result? If you're doing GST audit and somebody is using Excel, another person using GST audit, he's also using Excel. Is there a standard methodology you follow? And that's what I said is most important. Is first establish the process, put a system in place, standardize that, then you can actually use the tools and technology. Most of CEOs who buy software and ask me, okay, how it will help me to do the audit? I say, we are providing a solution not to train you in audit. We know that you already know the audit. What is important is tell me how you do the audit, then I can tell you what techniques or tools you can use for the purpose of doing the audit. So let's quickly look at a few concepts pertaining to data analysis. The most important thing is to prepare the criteria required for audit or the analysis test. So let's look at any type of audit or compliance or assignment. We'll look at completeness of the data. Is the data complete in all aspects? That means there are no missing elements of data. Is the data accurate? Is the data valid? Which means properly it is valid for the particular period. It's properly authorized. This segregation duty is implemented as required. It also presents all the information which is required. And there's a cutoff concept which is applicable. I'll show you when I show the demo how this particular audit test can be performed. So what you can look at is depending on the audit criteria, whether you're performing a GST audit or a tax audit or an internal audit, you need to use this criteria under each of the specific areas, for example, fixed assets. So in fixed assets audit, what is that you're going to look at? You'll apply completeness, which means what? All the assets which have been purchased during the year have been completely accounted. All the assets which have been bought have been recorded. All the assets which have been bought have been completely insured. All the assets which have been bought are completely available in the control of the enterprise. All the assets which have been bought are completely deployed in the enterprise to be able to uh, applicable for depreciation. So just using the concepts, you can decide what are the type of tests you need to have. Similarly, if you look at accuracy, you can apply the same concept, let us say, for loans. Or all the loans which have been sanctioned, have they been accurately documented? When you say accurate, it has been documented in the name of the person to whom it has been given. It has been uh, applied, the rate of interest which has been applied is correct and uh, the processing of the data is complete. Now, when you generate a report, the result is coming correctly. So when you compute the NPA, the NPA is computed accurately. Just take the simple concept accurate accuracy, you can develop different types of tests. So what you need to ask is, if you are doing an audit, what is that you want to be assured of? Like they say, in God we trust, rescue audit. 
So what are the criteria you're going to use? This is what you should be clear about. Now let's look at some specific audit or analysis tests. Now we have something called reasonable test. What does reasonable test which means? For example, salary paid to employees. Each category of employees have got a particular range. Is the salary within that particular reasonable range? If they bought a particular item, is the rate within the particular bandwidth which has been specified? Let's say we look at uh, limit. You look at what are the top uh, top uh, yeah, top or last X customers. What are the rate at which they have been supplied? Now, considering the average type of sales, what are the type of sales which is happening? You can look at. Similarly, completeness. For example, the specific test you can use identified duplicates or gap. You can also look at the format of the data. The format of the date is it correct and complete? You know in Excel if the date format is incomplete, all the analysis which you do goes for a task. You also can check for validation. I'll give you a demo how you can perform authorization. You can also look at periodicity, which means all the transactions which have come are within that particular accounting period. You can also bucket or analyze the data based on specific periods, aging or MIS. So these are the functions which you can use. Now, let's come to the most interesting part, which is talking to you, which is about walkthrough and demo of the software. Let me shift the screen. I'll go to the Excel software. I'm using a software called as eCat. OK, now here, let me also open one presentation. I want to show you the presentation. Yeah, there's a presentation. And I'm going to jump between the presentation and the Excel sheet. Are you able to see this presentation? Narsimhan, are you able to see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything is fine. Or should I share the screen? No. It's good. Yeah. The PPT also appearing. Yes. Yeah. OK. Good. So I'm going to pick up some of the techniques. A demo of key functions of data analytics using eCAT. I'm used uh, as a sample, the eCAT. You can use any software for that purpose. Probably some of the functions, those who are Excel experts, you can perform in Excel also. We'll see what is it. We'll also see uh, how which functions you can perform in Excel, how well you can perform, how simple or easy it is to use data analytics compared to Excel. Now, I think Mataji is also talking about Excel being a Swiss knife. Now it depends on our own perspective. As telling, uh, let's say if you have a knife, using a knife, can you cut a tree? Yes, you can cut a tree. Now, using a saw, can you cut a tree? Yes. Now, the question is, you should know what to use, which tool, and when to use the tool. Now, if I got a sword, can I use it to cut a tree? You can use it, but it depends on what is the time and effort you're going to spend. So depending on the need, you should be able to use the right tools. If I got a screw to be removed or a screw to be fixed, I should know that I cannot use a hammer. I should use a screwdriver. OK, so data analytics is generally a multi-dimensional set of tools. What are the three primary functions of data analytics software? First, it has enhanced power of uh, use of Excel. So it means it can be a definite time saver. It can also give you business intelligence and MIS reports on the fly. Yesterday, we was uh, showing various types of dashboards which you see. Now we'll see, I'll show you this also, and you can see what are the various types of dashboards which you can generate from here. You can also perform data analytics, very, very powerful data analytics in just a few simple clicks. For example, when I was talking about how to identify unique, he said for identify unique, you have to become an insider of Microsoft. No, you don't need to become an insider. Using data analytics, you can do this in a few clicks, in a few seconds. So there, could, there are more than 350 functions in the eCAT. Like that, each software has its own set of functions. Now, Narsimhan also talked about when you're using data analytics, this is some of the things you have to look at. Now, if you look at the software itself has been designed to follow the steps of a data analytics software. So you have curate, which means you purify the data. You bring the data to an acceptable standard of usage. You profile the data, which means macro level, you get an idea about the data. Third, you analyze the data performed from various perspectives. For example, I can identify duplicate, identify units, identify changes. I can perform various types of sampling. I can do fuzzy match. I can do sort and filter. I can split sheet based on specific criteria. This is what the various types of analysis I can do. I can also do various types of investigative function, which is the next level. For example, I can perform MIS analysis. I can query the data. I can also have a relating with me joining two types of files and uh, finding out the result, which we do in VLOOK, VLOOKUP. I can also ensure that what are data, uh, what are process for doing, I'm also documenting this. And then also have tools, utilities and tools which I can use, and there's also help available. These are generally the parallels of functions which are available. Uh, Narsimhan, you can, I think, uh, mute me my video so that we can focus on the presentation. 
So yes, let's sir. have a quick look at the brief description and demo of the key functions. Now, first, I said you need to get the data in the required format. The first function we use is what is called as half my sheets. What does half my sheet mean? Half my sheet means, uh, Narsiman, you can mute my video. Yeah, thank you. You can reformat the column heading rows automatically after the standard tabular format for the current or selected workbook or workbook for performing various functions. Okay, now let's see, jump to Excel and see how we can perform this. Okay, I've got this data. Now, if you see, uh, this is the sample data which I'm using. This is also available in the software. There are some guidelines for how to use the software. Okay, before I get started, I just want to show now it's 11.45. I may go up to 12.45. Is that okay? Narsiman? Yes, sir. Please, sir. No problem. So, yeah. So maybe we'll keep about 10, 15 minutes in the end for questions. I'd like to spend more sure. time here because this, I think, will be a lot of value addition. Okay. Sure. sure. So we also have got frequently asked questions. but in, Yeah. Then we have sample data for test related from various types of... Now, I was telling you about Curate. But if you see the Curate, this is the Curate panel. Okay. Let me see if I can magnify this. Yes. And if you see Curate functions, and if you see remove, yesterday somebody was asking, can I remove trailing spaces, multiple spaces, all the type of analysis you can do. Remove broken links also. Next. Now you've got delete. Now if you look at delete, I can remove objects and images, top X rows, empty blank rows, empty. All this you can do in a simple click. Okay. Similarly, you can transform the data, extract visible cells. For example, I filter the data. I want to extract only for specific cells. I can directly copy, instead of copy and paste, I can directly uh, copy, make a copy of the with shell cells which are visible. Okay, you can also segregate itself based on the font style. Okay, you can fix the date. And now here, what I want to show you was the function called Harmai Sheets. Now for that, let me pick up a sample data. This is the sheet data which is available. Now if you see here, I got an image here. I got a link here. I've got the data for top rows which are to removed. Now this, all this, this data sheet is in a mess. Okay, now if you see here, a lot of data available. Now let me remove the free screen pin. Yeah. Yes. Now if you see, now we have a lot of data here, maybe about 2,000 rows plus. Okay. Now you also got blank rows. If you see here. Okay. Now again, you've got blank rows. Now if you see, if you apply the filter, now you know that you have to select the whole sheet and then you have to do the surplus, otherwise you won't be able to remove. Now here again, you've got blank rows. Okay, now we've got all this. Now I'd like to harmonize this data. Now let's see this where the power of the data analytics comes in. I go to transform. Okay, I just pick up the harmonize sheets. Now you got this, you're able to see this. Now you see, it says you can do for the worksheet or you can do for the complete workbook itself. Okay, what is that I want to enter? Now if you see here, there are 13 rows which I want to remove. I say remove top 13 rows. I give that. Okay, next, I've got unmarked column heading, unmarked all data like that. i got multiple things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say select basic options. By default, we know that when you're performing data analytics, these are the major things I want to do. Remove empty rows, remove images, remove blank rows, hang it, name blank column, all these things I do. And I have to just say yes. Now, if there are subtotals also, I can remove the subtotal other things and do it. I say okay. Now you see the magic, what happens with this. With one simple click, now see the data is transformed. Which means I got the data in a structured format in which I want. Now I want to see whether the blank sheet this one is gone. Now you see, I come to the end, which means all the blank rows, everything is removed. And this is what is the power of the data analytics. Now this way we curate or purify the data. I just showed you one function, how to harmonize the data. Now let's come back again. Now let's look at profiling of the data. One of the first things I want to know is, I want to know what is the overall profile of the data. So this is where we perform a function called column statistics. Okay. What does this column statistics mean? I want to display the column statistics of numeric date or character related data. Okay. We can also, I'm also giving an example where this could be used. I want to show you with a simple thing, how this cutoff concept is applied, how the completeness concept can be applied and inferred just by using a simple function. Let's come to our Excel. We have got this Excel. Now I'm coming to this one, statistics. I come to details, column statistics. 
I'm using the same data what I got here. Now here, by default, it tells me the three types of data here, numeric data and character. I'm going to pick up the profiling for the three types of data. Now it gives me various types of statistics. I can get number of negative record, number of null value record like that. I've got complete set of the information. Okay, I'm going to say select all numeric statistics. Okay, and I say, okay. And let's see what we can get from this. Now this should be able to perform. So here in this data analytics tools, now you see in a few seconds I got the data. For the amount, I got the average of positive records. There are no negative records. What are the average of all the records? Number of negative records, number of positive records, number of null value records. So it means there are records which have got value is null. Number of zero value records, number of distinct records. So it means I get a complete profile. I also know the maximum value is this and the minimum value is 500. If there are any cells with inconsistent formula, which means he has given me a sheet and he's applied a formula, somewhere in between he's gone and changed the formula. That also you'll be able to analyze. The same thing applies for quantity and unit price. Now you see, in a few seconds, I got a complete profiling of the data. Now based on this, now I'm going to ask my audit staff to go and look at this null value records, which are these records, which are null value records. I double click, I get the complete list. Now it tells me that these are all the POs which have been cancelled. Now I want to verify. I can ask my staff to save this file, okay, and ask them to verify the documentation pertaining to this. Okay, so it means you already copied the data. Now let me come back again here. Now I would like to do the statistics again for let's say the date related field. Now I'm going to pick up the date. By default, it, it says there's only one date, date related field. I'm going to select all the date related fields. Now see the power. What are the functions which are available in just one screen? And I have to just say, okay. Now tell me if you used Excel, now is using data analytics software difficult? Now same thing, if you want to find out the data as per month wise, I want to find out the data as per the, can I get this and see we already got the result. What do I get here? Now let me see if I can apply the magnifier. Yes, now if you see here, it gives me the total number of records, number of null value records. Now I was talking about the cutoff concept. Now based on the data, it has told me the earliest date is 1st April, the latest date is 2016. Now it also tells me month wise, it gives me the complete set of records. It also gives me day wise what are the sales will happen. Now interestingly, I find that even Sunday they are making the sales. Now it also tells me that number of sales with inconsistent record is nil. Okay, this is what is the power of profiling of the data. Like you remember, I said the data analyst prepares using this type of a data. I can prepare and profile and decide what are the specific areas I want to focus on during the audit process. Next, let's go to the classify. This is similar to the pivot table function which most of you use. I'll show you how different it is from the pivot table. Let's understand what this classify function means. It groups E distinct value in a character column and displays sum and count of a corresponding numeric column. For example, if I got the sales data, I can summarize the sales data as per name of the customer or I can summarize the data as per the product code. If I got the purchases and I want to find out what the purchases as per the specific rate, I can group them as per the specific rate or as per the product category and find out are there any exceptions, which means once I group it, I know for the same product code, have we paid GST at a different rate? Okay, now let's go to the demo. I'm going to use the same sheet. What is that I want to do? I want to do classify. Now I come to data, I come to classify. Now what do I do? I want to classify, let's say based on the material code, which means based on the material code. Narsimhan, can you unmute, unmute my video? Mute my video. Yeah, thank you. So I want the material code and what the total I want. I can get the total for the quantity. I just want to hear unit price. Unit price, it's meaningless to total. I pick up the amount, okay? I can also get the percentage for this. I'm not going to select the percentage. Now I've got the material code. I can also group by, which means I can group this based on the vendor code, which means it will give me the details for each material code, for each of the suppliers, what are the rate and what are the purchases I've made. Okay, now like what you do in pivot table, we can do the same thing here, but let's see what are the difference here. Now you see, I got the result here at one shot. What do you see here? Now if you see, 
class one material code, it tells me what is the count, what is the percentage of material count, and it gives me the sum. Now let's look at some more magic which you can do. Now I just want to sort it and see who is the customer from whom we bought the max for which material has been bought maximum. Now I know this is the product DB1657, which has been bought the maximum number of times. I want to similarly sort it based on the value. I think there is some issue here. Oh, I think there is no problem because of the similar value is looking like this. Okay, this is based on the lowest value and the highest value. I can get the information. Similarly, I want to look at based on the count. Which product have you bought the maximum number of times? Which product the least number of times? I give this information. Not only that, I also want to find out which item, let's say, based on the count, which item has been bought more than, let's say, 80 times. It will filter and give me the information at one shot. So these are all the items which have been bought 80. Now let me say 85. Now I'm going to do this again. Yeah. So I want to pick up 85. Now you see, I got the filter. Now I want this information. I want to do analysis based on this. I can pick up this data and do the analysis. Okay. Now this is about the classify. Now let's look at stratify. Which means I got the data. I want to stratify based on the bands, based on the value. Okay. What is this concept all about? Now remember, this can be done in Excel also. Anything can be done in Excel. You ask any Excel guru, any software programs are developed to such an extent. Now you can do that particular analysis using the software. The only question is, I just remember the analogy. If you want to cut a tree, are you going to use a knife or a sword or are you going to use a saw? That's what you need to look at. So depending on the objective, use the right tool. That's what is most important. Now, what does the stratified numeric do? Groups numeric data into different strata based on specific intervals and displays the count and sum with percentage for each of the strata. I also accept what are the assertions, accuracy, and capital index is what you can check. Let's go back to the same. I'm just sticking to the same sample data. Now, here, what did I want to do? I want to do stratify. Just go to stratify. There are ways to to stratify. I'm just going to pick up numeric. Now, if you see here, the look and feel is very similar. What is the field I want to stratify? Amount by default is already picked up the numeric field. Field total is also amount. I can also do based on the quantity. Unit pride doesn't, it's not meaningful. Okay, now next, it also tells me what is the minimum and what is the highest and it gives me band. Okay, this amount for the timing, I'll use it as it is. I can also group it and say, I want to do it based on the product wise or based on the vendor wise. <coughs> I can also put a condition. I want to do the stratify for all values where the purchase rate is more than uh, 5,000 rupees. Okay, this is where I can give the condition. Okay, for the purpose of simplicity and uh, uh, doing it faster, I'm not selecting all the options. Now it's a fill, it by default it picked up everything. Now just imagine if you have to do in Excel, you have to go and create the band for each of them and then apply the value. And next, most important, I click OK. Now let the software do its work and it'll show you the result. Now if you see here, it has come to the result. What does it show me? The stratify. Okay, yes. Now if you see, blanks, now immediately I get to know that 13 blanks you remember we had, it shows me the blank, it shows what is the value between 500 to uh, this one, next again to 296, 859 to this one, like that it gives me this one, not only that, it gives me the count. Now for example, I want to sort this, I just click, I get to know which is now, this is strata, for example, I would like to do investigation, I double click and I can go to the details. Okay, this is how simple it is to do the stratification. Same thing I want to do stratified random sampling. When you come to the same function through the sampling option, this sampling tab would be enabled. When you click on the sampling tab, it will give open a column where you can enter the number of samples and automatically you can select the sampling. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Summarize quick. Now we did now, if you remember for the character related data, we have done it for the date related data. Now let's look at what is summarize mean. Now, in the case of pivot table, it really doesn't matter whether the data is date, character, or the sort. We can do it in one way. So, summarize the total is the data in the selected numeric column based on for each distinct value and displays the corresponding count and the sum. Okay, for example, you would like to do a sales analysis and pick up for each value of sales what is the count and what is the value. Let's come to the same table. Now, I come back to the data. No, uh, I have to come to eCAT. Now, when you click on eCAT, eCAT is an add-in to Excel. So all these functions, about 350 plus functions are available here. Now here I said data. I want to go to summarize. Summarize also is available something called quick and key field. I'm just showing you quick. Now this is what I got. You see here, what is that I want to do? I want to summarize based on, I can do on the quantity also. 
I can do based on the amount. Okay, I'm going to select the amount and here accumulate the amount. Okay, I just selected for simple example. I could have selected the quantity also and I've got quantity here or it could be quantity there and amount here. Okay, and I also want the result in descending form. And I can also group it, which means I can decide grouping based on the vendor code or the material code. Okay, here I'm not looking at the material code for the timing. I'm just doing without the material code. Now, if you see here, for each unique value of sales, it summarizes and tells me the count and the sum. It also gives me the percentage. Here, now I want to know which value we sold maximum. You find this 296.4090, we are sold once. Okay, now if you see here, 2,400, 13 times it happened, 713 times it happened. So it means if you're doing invoicing, now you want to find out some exceptions, you'll be able to find out the patterns. Which value of sale somebody is trying to enter or which value of sales has been, same value has been repeated multiple times. Now, same thing, if you group it as per customer, for each customer, you can also see the pattern of purchases or the pattern of sales for each of the customers. So you should remember data analytics gives you insights from data it doesn't give you insights it gives you information what you infer from the data is insights now let's come back again we saw summarize quick let's go to the next one which is aging of the data okay now for aging i need to have some data which is clear which means groups and totals all the records that are within or beyond the aging data based on the specific controls for example i have got the stock the stock i have got the purchase date now i want to find out the aging of the data based on the pattern of the stock. Now I've got one uh, date, some, uh, data called the aging analysis file. Maybe probably I'll use that and I'll show you this. Where is in my aging analysis file? One well, another important interesting thing which you find in this case called as the index sheet. Now it creates an index sheet. Based on that index sheet, I can navigate to the specific sheet. Now this is what I got. For each of the, this one, I have got the purchase date with the amount. Now I want to perform, now let's look at the item. The stock ranges from 2016 to 2017. Now I want to perform aging. Now I come to data. Let's see where this function is. Data. Here we got aging. Can I perform Excel aging in Excel? Yes, you can perform aging in Excel also. What you have to do? You have to compute on a particular date, minus it by the particular this one, purchase date, compute the this one, and then again do the circus to be able to get that. Okay, now by default, it found out the minimum date is 2014 and the maximum is 2017. It has got the complete details and it's given the interval of 30. Let's say I want to give the interval of 60. Okay, and I say fill. Okay, and then I say I can get the summary. I can also get the details, which means details means it gives product wise. Let's go to the summary. So in a few seconds, I've already got the band of data. So between 0 to 60, five items are there, 770,300. Between 60 to 120, I got this data. Now, if I see here, magic. Now, if you see here, upper bound, more than 1,000, there are three items, and this is the value of the items. Now, if I want to see what are these items, I double click. It takes me to the particular items, and it tells me what the data purchase. Now, we know, based on this, I can also see whether these are actually obsolete items, or these are items which are not available, these are just being shown. So in data analytics, I get the raw data from the so from the source uh, software, or export it to Excel and use this Excel data to perform the analysis. Similarly, I'm interested in which are these items, or let's say look at the count: 120 to 180, there are 18 items. Okay, or 180 to 240, there are one item. I can perform this analysis further and redo this again depending on my specific requirements. Now I just want to demonstrate how simple and easy it is to use this data analytics function. So get the concept, then you can apply using whatever tool you want. Now let's look at MIS. What does MIS show? MIS shows for the date related field summation of values. Okay, now let me come to this function. Now what I would like to do is let me come back again. Uh, which is the function I want to use? Let's say MIS, I want to use the sales transactions. Yes, I've got the sales transactions. Now, if you look at the sales transaction data, I got about 6666666 number pros. Okay. Now, what is the MIS? Where is this MIS available? Analysis. MIS. Now, tell me in Excel, can I perform this? I've got the sales. We can do in Excel also. How is that? How is it? Is? Let's look at it. Now this gives me at one shot, it gives me all these options. Okay. I want to know what is the sales made for each day of the year. Okay. Add a click. Okay. Now this should be able to give me for each day 
what are the number of sales which has happened okay now this is where business intelligence or analysis or inference comes into picture now it tells me on these days the transactions are only one now you can go and check up why these transactions are only one now if you say equal to one it will filter and pick up only one or i want to say what are the days on which only five transactions have happened okay i'll be able to get this data so it means i can filter and pick this information i want to pick up based on on what they have done any window dressing okay so what i want to know is i want to group this data sort this data based on value this is the day on which the low sales has happened again single click i'll be able to get the based on the total value for example 155 the total 25 or 28 lakh 59100 on 69 you find it. so in this case i can go further and analyze <coughs> what is the pattern here it looks like on some particular date the number of transactions are quite high now i can go and this will pick up this data and extract it not only that i have a beautiful function called extract when i click on extract now you see it has given me the particular data this if you see if you have to do this in pivot table you have to go individually and pick up each of this data now here we got extract i can go and say i want this result i want this result i want this data it actually runs a query it picks up all the transactions of this particular date i say extract in a few seconds i'll be able to get all the transactions that happened here and gives us a message the job is done not only that it would have actually copied the data c15569 all the data what are we had now see from six, there are 148 transactions which are of this particular making this particular condition this is about the mis now mis let me show you one more interesting thing yes now let's come to mis now let me come back to our sales transactions ha uh, let's see i am coming back to mis are you with me so far i hope you are able to follow me and you are getting the concept clear Yes, I think uh, Nasim has also clearly mentioned it's important that you should view this in full view mode. Where are possible? I'm trying to sh show in uh, this one zooming it. I got sales MIS. I want to know based on day of now. Let me go day of the week, okay? And uh, let me see the result. What do I expect to see? I get for each day of the this okay week. What are the total count and what are the total sales which has happened? Now you see this. On what day the sales is the highest? On what day the sales is the now? What is this Wednesday? Okay, so Wednesday the sales seems to be the lowest. Thursday, Guru Vara Mantama. There also the sales seems to be the lowest, lesser. So you can see the pattern. Now they are working seven days of the week. There's something you can find out. If the company is not supposed to work on a Sunday, you'll be able to pick up all the exceptional transactions which happened on a Sunday. Okay, same way. Now if I'm doing a GST audit, I'll just show you one last function in this. <coughs> I got this. Now you should tell me what I should do. I go and select the sales because here I got only sales. I got this. If I pick up, pick up the procurement and there are multiple uh, value fields, it will show me everything. Now, can I do the uh, invoice number? What are the user doing based on the invoice number? There is no meaning. So it's important that you should select the right fields. Now here. i want to know month which means i want to know month wise sales now i want to do it based on the gst rate let's say this had the gst rate also i can go and group based on the gst rate okay based on that i can get the result here i got this mis what did i select i selected monthly so what do i expect to get i expect to get sales monthly so if in i am doing a gst audit i can go and compare with the sales which means from the raw data i got what are the sales now if i grouped it based on the gst rate for each type of gst rate i would have got this information and i can do the analysis i can also see on which month the sales is the highest on which month the sales is the lowest and i can see the pattern i want to see the chart of this i think i can click on this i should be able to see the chart okay this is a simple chart now the beauty in this case is once i got the data i can get into excel and prepare any type of chart which i want so it enhances the power of excel we got mis let us come to outliers this is another interesting thing which means what i want to find it find out is what are the exceptions or irregularities which are there let's understand what is an outlier it displays a record that exceed x number of times average or standard deviation now in this case this where your domain expertise comes from the business now in this company probably the average sales rate may be let's say three times or five times you can define that parameter based on that i can get the outlier now let's see i go here now i got the same sales data i want to perform the outliers 
outliers by i can often do by by mass by bounds okay i'm not getting into that i just want to pick up based on the numbers okay what do i select field for outlier i want to select the sales i can also group it by let's say the name so it means based on the customer wise i can know within the customer what is the outliers okay now i'm going to select let's say three times the average okay this is done i can get based on the details or based on the summary which means details means for all the transactions put together it will compute the outliers or it will summarize and based on the summary it will generate the information let's see what is the outlier and what is the result we get now here if you see what do i get for each of the days it tells me for what is the sales what is the average sales and what is the difference okay now where, where the difference is higher between the number of variance based on the day of the sales i get this information what are the number of times the sale is different this is three times let's see now this is where now these are the areas of concern now on 20th march the variance is 12 times okay which means the it's 226500 and the lowest could be much the other amount so you can go and check each of these areas so it means at one glance i'm able to find out what are the outliers now i want to pick up only items where is greater than three okay this is all greater than three only let's say i want to pick up greater than five it gives me that information okay this is how i can pick up the outliers now tell me can i do this in excel yes you can do it in excel first you have to compute the average then based on that you apply the formula maybe you can write a macro and then automate the macro and use it every time okay so i'm just giving the concept so that you can start applying this concept so in data analytics the most important thing is to ensure that the data is correct and complete valid and authorized and it provides proper presentation disclosure and it belongs to the correct period and ultimately i should be able to identify any exception irregularities and find out whether the impact the materiality or impact the financial disclosure now using this type of tools it gives me at one shot it gives me a complete perspective into the data it gives me insight into the data regardless of what the value now i think for duplicate this is a very simple function so it means i can find out duplicates let me show you quickly i'm going to run this quickly there is a recording available you can also see this now i just go here i did for duplicates now i did for duplicates you remember yesterday unix i'll come to unix also i did for duplicates how do I identify duplicates? I just want to identify duplicate based on the invoice number. That's all. I can find identify duplicate based on the details and the summary. I'll just do you. You know that in uh, this one, we also have the based on the number. I'm going to do based on the summary, which means it tells me for each type. Now, for example, there are three invoices which are blanks. 1034 has come two times. 1454 has come two times. Now, I want to see the details. What do you do? Double click and get the details. This is how you can identify the duplicates. Now let's come to the next function, identify Unix. Okay, how simple it is, what is unique? Which means I remove the items which are come multiple times, I want only items which are unique, which means they are not repeated, they come only once. Here, which means now I want to find out which is duplicates. Now for example, let's come back again here, identify, if you see here, identify duplicates, I got identify unique. I can also do what is called as remove duplicates, which means I want one instance of everything. I can remove duplicates, I'll be able to get all the information. It removes the duplicate and gives me unique plus also one from the duplicates. Okay, if I got a customer sales, I want to find out the list of customers. I can use this based on that, I can get the complete list of customers. So what do I want to do? I want to identify uniques, which means I want to find out which are the customers were bought only once. Okay, this is interesting. Which are the customers who bought only once? That's what I want to find out. I'll say, okay. Now it tells me these are the guys who bought only once, which means they bought, others have bought multiple times. Now I find this Amir has got 2,26,500 and is bought only once. Then I can go and investigate why this guy has bought only once. And there's one more guy we have sold, but the invoice number itself is missing. Now this is how we can infer insight from the data. Identify format. What is the format? I have got this particular GST number or PAN number or anything for that matter. It's supposed to have a unique format whether it's following that unique format. Now for that, I have to use the PAN number file. Let me see where is the PAN file. Where is my PAN and TAN? I can pick up any of them. I got this PAN number. Okay, now what do I do? 
simple. I have to just go and identify the format. I just go here, identify the format. Okay, I've selected the pan, show me the field length. I can also identify the exceptions. Okay, let's see what happens in this case. Now, if you see, it has identified the field length for each of these items and it tells me, okay, what are the field length? So it means now, let's say assuming pan number, I'm not sure about this, uh, pardon my ignorance. So these are the case where only nine numbers are there. Now, these are case, I'm not sure how many numbers should be the pan numbers. Okay, now 11. Okay, and these are the cases. So it means based on this, you can find out where the errors are. Same thing can be applied, let's say, for the tan also. If I got the tan, I want to go and identify the format. It can be, let's say, employee number, bank ID, anything for that matter. It's supposed to have a particular pattern. You can go and select that. It's very simple. See, by default, it's selected the tan. I just ask him to show the field length. Okay, now it gives me the field length. Based on that, I can go and pick up the exceptions. So it means, if you see, there may be 10,000 transactions, 50,000 transactions. I'm going to identify the exceptions data, which is not falling within the format, and one shot. Okay, now we've got this character gaps. What's character gaps? If I've got a data which is alphanumeric, it ignores the character and finds out the difference based on the removing the given character gaps. Let's see what are the file we have to use. I'm going to use the account trans file. Where is my account trans file? Yes, we got the account trans file. Yes, this is what I got. Now here I got the transaction number. Okay, this transaction number follows a particular sequence. Let's now go and apply the function identify gaps, character gaps. Now what is that I want to do? I want to do based on the transaction number. It's very important that you know what the field you're going to select. By default, it is found out the field must. This is how it is. Okay, then I say show me the result. I see it has found out the difference. These are the places where there's a gap. And now let's check this from 12 to 12, 24 and 41. Now let's go here. If you check here, see 12 is missing here. Okay, like the 24 is missing. So like the 40, remember 41 is missing. So this is how I can find out the character gap. For example, bank has got a particular number pattern. They have first few characters and after that have numeric. Based on that, I can define. I'll be able to find out the gaps okay identify changes identify changes now for example i got the salary for the month of let's say november and december i want to find out what is the difference between each of this i'm sure you cannot do this in excel let us come to this i have to come to the cell which is salary of november december employees number yes i've got employees number now I got employee December. Okay, now if you see here, there are 25, which means 24 rows. And in November, I got 24 rows. So it looks similar. Now, I, what I want to do is, I want to find out the changes, which means I come to changes, identify changes. Now, see the type of options that are available. Uh, now, you see here, I picked up EK sample data employee number. Now, I have to go and select the second file, which is the employee December. Yes, I have selected employee December. Now I got this. See, this is what I got. Now identify. There are different options. Uh, identify cells that have changed. Identify cells that have not changed. I'm going to select the two options and what the color I want. Okay, identify cells that have not changed. Right by default selected. Display comment to cells that have changed. That I can also do. I can also expect the list of changes. Okay, I'm just saying okay. Now you see, we found out what are the changes. Which are the cells which are not changed. With the cells which are changed. Okay, let's go quickly. Let's see. I'm not able to cover everything. Let's see. Duplicate in same row. This is a very simple function. I think I can do it in Excel also. What is duplicate in the same row? Which means now there is a user ID and there is an authorizer ID. Now both of them are same persons. I want to find out whether the same transaction is authorized, is entered and authorized by the same person. Okay, let's see which file do I use for this. I think I can use the procurement file. Yes. Now, where is my procurement file? Yes, there is a the procurement file. Now, here I got the, let's see what the, now, most important is you need to know what is the data dictionary, which means what are the fields in the data? I got user ID here. Is there authorized ID, ID here? User ID. 
No, I don't have authorized ID. Let me come back and check which is the file. Procurement file, okay. It should be here then. Vendor name, unit price, pay trans, user ID. I think it seems to have removed. We had one more thing called as authorized ID. Okay, for the time, let me just pick up this way. I'm just going to modify this, copy this fellow, paste it here for the purpose of demo. Now, insert copy itself. Hey, hey, what did I do? Okay, let me just be careful. Yes, insert copy itself. Yes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, oh, no, most of them are going to be common. Okay. Mm, no, I think we'll leave it this way. So what you can do is, for example, let's say I've changed this. No, I can just go and change. I'll just show you how it works. I will not show the result. I just wanted to get the concept. Where did we have? So there's one more duplicates in the same row. Here it will show everything because I just copied the cell. If they're different, I'll be able to pick up this one. What is that I have to pick up? I have to pick up the user ID. Now here the cell number also I have to give. So this is very important. I should give a different, for example, this could be authorized ID. Once I do this, you'll be able to tell me which are the places where the same user, the same value is there in both the cells. Okay, now let's come back. Okay, duplicating the same row you see. Same, same, different. This is interesting. What is the same, same, different? Most of this I'm telling you are audit concepts or tests which we need to implement. So what does it do? Match values of each column of all rows to identify records where the same value from the two selected columns are different. Same, but value of the third column is different. For example, I got the suppliers whose name and pan is same, but the address is different. Okay, which is the one I'm going to use? I'm going to use the procurement file. Okay, I've already got the procurement file. What is that I want to do? I want to identify same, same, different in identify, duplicate, same, same, different. I can apply for multiple things. For example, let's say I've got the employee ID, employee name, address is different, or employee name and address, but his bank account is different, or supplier name. I've got the supplier name and I've got the supplier address, but his bank account is different. <coughs> like that, I can find out different things. GSTN name and GSTN address, but his GSTN number, this one, uh, uh, for the bank account is different. Like that, I can pick up different permutation combinations. Here, what is that I want to find? Same. Let's say I want to find the material code. If it's the material code, same. And what is different? No, let's pick up the vendor code. So it means I have got the vendor code, which is same. I can do for multiple fields at one shot. The vendor name is different. OK, you got the concept? With the same vendor code, I've got two different names. Let's see, there are about 2,000 plus. See, it is one shot, it has picked up this one. I got the vendor name 350. So these are all the things which I've got, which are duplicates. OK, I can also go and find out the, which are, see here, I've got, if you see far group, here 350, let's see if you can sort it based on the numbers. Now here 366, I'll also see there'll be some, which means it has copied everything and given. I'll also find there are some things which are duplicated. Okay, all right, now let's come back here again. Okay, fuzzy match arrange, I think it's very simple. So very simple, but you can't do this in Excel. Okay, display similarity in two row, rows based on values by eliminating transposition within the cell. Okay, find duplicate transactions which have been entered in different ways by changing all of the words. Let me go to the account trans file. Where is my account trans file? I got this account trans file. Yes, account trans file. Now here, if you see, I have written this narration. I think Narthiman also showed this example. Now, what do I want to find? I want to do fuzzy match. There are four things. I'm just doing a simple one. Arrange. The same thing I have written. So I'm going to select the Transaction, what is the transaction description? Okay, now what is that value? Split value, I want to say space. That's all. I can also say find duplicate to tell me which are the duplicates. I'll say, okay. See, by default, you go and find out. Okay, for example, if you see here the result. Oh, oh okay. Now, if you see here, now this is the what has been arranged. Now, this is what is the duplicate. So here, same transaction number with the same thing narration has been written differently. So I can find out these are things which are duplicate. Now, same trans printer number you find it has got check number so many times been issued. So this is how I can do a fuzzy range, a fuzzy match and do it. For example, supplier name has come uh, with different name. For example, my name, let's say Abdul Rafiq. So again, it's Rafiq Abdul or Rafiq A. All these type of things I can pick up at one shot. Okay, stratified random, I already explained to you. I'm not going to show. What you can do is you first stratify this data 
and then based on that you can pick up the sample based on the different bands of data sampling classified now there are actually 34 types of sampling now, i'll just show you a quick this one we already done some classified if you remember classified we did okay i'm just going to show you this example now if i have got this let me come back to classify i'll pick up the let's say uh, i'll pick up the sales trunk file what is that i want to do i want to do sampling now if you see sampling now look at the menus selection i got the three simple things intervals number and total count by criteria by analysis i can do numeric character outliers which means i can do the outliers based on the outliers i can pick up the sample based on statistics i can pick up based on exceptions i can pick up i can search and pick a sample i can query list of values based on duplicates i can pick up which means i can perform various types of analysis from the analysis i can pick up the sample data <coughs> now i was thinking of doing the based on the classified here okay based on mi i can do sampling all the analytical functions which are there, you can do sampling based on this. What is sampling all about? You want to do interleaved sampling, okay? Which means now I've got the sales, same thing, okay? Now I'm going to pick up the, I want to do, I'm not doing any grouping. So I just picked up the name, I want the total sales. Now I see, we did classify last time, you remember? Now here, sampling is enabled. When I click on sampling, I click on this, and I say in this case, let's say I go and say, I want it based on the value. Now I've got this, let's say I want to pick up three here, I want to pick up four, or I can say sample percentage, I can give the sample percentage based on that I pick up this information. I can say five and I say extract. Based on the band which I've selected, you should be able to select the data from that particular pattern and give me the 10 samples. See, now you got this. This is how simple it is to do the sampling. So there are actually about 34 types of sampling which are available. Okay, let me close this guy, okay. Now, relative size factor, I think Natsiman also talked about this one. What is the relative size factor? It's also there in Excel, Excel also. Sorry, uh, in uh, Tally also. I'll just show you one of them. There's one more thing, maximum variance factor. Okay, now, difference between maximum variance factor and relative size is, relative size factor is the highest and the lowest. Uh, highest and maximum variance factor is the highest and the lowest. Relative size factor is the first highest and the second highest. Okay. Now, I'll just show you, I think maybe two or three functions and we'll go further. What we want to do was here, I want to find, so for that, I think I need to pick up the right file. I'm going to pick up this data procurement. What I'd like to do is, where is my relative size factor? Here. Ah, this is very simple. You need to know how to select the right data. What does I want to apply right, this one on? I want to apply based on the select RSS field, which is the unit price. Now, based on the material code, yes. And now, what is the numeric field I want to do? Based on the unit price. Simple. Which means for each material code, I want to do the RSS based on the unit price. Now, I can do high and I can do low. In fact, this idea of low was given by Venu. When I was discussing, he said, oh, I can do from the highest node. Let it do from the bottom also. Then we added another function called as low. Okay, now we see the power of the data analytics software. Here, at one click, in a few seconds, I have got to know which are the items which are exceptions. Now, if you see here, this item, 40 rupees, lowest, this one is 5 rupees, which means the variation of 8 times. This particular item, you find, uh, first you 5,000 rupees, second is 2,984, the variance is 1.6, which means it gives me the complete variance for each of these values, which means at one shot, I'm able to pick up this information, which means I've done a complete digital analysis of all these 2,000 items which have been purchased and picked up the exceptions in a few seconds. Now, there are 2,000 items, there will be 20,000 items. In fact, we have done analysis for one e-commerce company where they had 9 lakh items and about 35,000 items, and we were able to do in a few minutes. Okay, maximum variance factor is similar, I'm not showing. Join file is similar to the VLOOKUP function, where you can join two files and show. Okay, I'll do the authentication check. What is authentication check? So I want to find whether the operation has been completely and correctly performed, not completely, correctly performed. Okay, let me show the example. Now here, let me pick up the right file. Yes, I have got the sales file and I've got the sales operation limit. Now we have kept this file in such a way so that you can also use the sample data and use it for learning. Okay, I've got the sales. After sales, I've also got on sales operation limit. Let me push this guy here. Okay, now I've got the sales. Now let's see, in the sales transaction file, what do I have? I have all the user IDs. Okay, name, user ID is there. 
and in the sales authorization limit i have the limit now what i want to do is i want to check whether all the transactions which have been entered there are about 66 66 between 6666 transactions are there and there are how many users <clears throat> there are about 10 users i want to find do a segregation of duties or authorization of the sale whether all the transactions have been done authorized by the user based within their authorization limit okay so what do i do here we have something called a ready made template so sale i have got a authentication check do you want to perform in background click just to perform normal i say i want to perform normal so all the functions which take long time we do not want excel to wait so we have provided the option where it will be provided in the, done in the background you can continue to work in excel suppose you got one file which is 50000 records it may take five minutes to perform because ultimately you should remember that in this case we are not depending on excel we have our own database for example in this case access the backend all the query everything run in the access backend engine and you get the result and displayed in the software now here i'm going to second select the sales authorization limit file yes it's selected i got this now what i want to do is i want to match the user id is equal to user id okay that is done what is the next thing i want to do i got the sales limit what is the check i want to perform i want to check whether the sales is greater than the limit this will give me at one shot all the transactions which are authorized by the users beyond their given limit okay now let's see what is the magic and how i can do this this is where the power of data comes in in a few seconds you should be able to get the complete which means you have done 100% authentication check of all the transactions and found out there are 21 exceptions okay which means now this person if you see ra his limit is 20000 he has done transaction 120000 now you find you want to find out how many transactions have been done by ra now you find totally four transactions are there you want to find out how many are done by sa you find there are how many this guy seems to have done 10 transactions okay his limit is 10000 and whereas if you look at this one he has also authorized transaction 1 lakh 4000 now this is where you can save this in excel and ask your staff to go and do a detailed verification to why this happened and why this compliance was violated okay now compare files this i think is the last function and a few other things let me quickly walk through that you can also split sheet by group this is very simple <coughs> which means what the data i got for example i showed you the sales data i want to split this based on <coughs> the data entered by this uh, by the user or i got the sales uh, and based on the gst i want to split into groups gst at 12% gst at 80% like that i can split the data it will actually copy the data into separate sheet in one shot okay you can also do pareto analysis which is that 80 20 rule okay you can also do abc analysis or you can also do quadrant analysis quadrant analysis high 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 medium high low like that you can do the quadrant analysis you can also apply the benford law i'll show you the benford law also so the two things i'm going to show before you go let's come back here so what is that i want to show you i want to show you let's pick up this information let's say i want to pick up the parrot analysis i want to show the compare files yes any anyway, let me finish this so parrot analysis i want to pick up the sales no i can go and base i can also perform based parrot analysis based on the name and then based on the sale value it means within each of the customers i want to find okay which are the value which is 80% or 20% like that or i can remove this and do it anyway let me finish this i can do a summary now this in fact idea for this is given by mehta ji when you're discussing he is an expert in excel so he called me once and said the uh, rafiq ji ho sakta hai parrot analysis the set kyun nahi ho sakta then you worked on the logic and based on the pair and you got this 80% and then you got 20% Similarly, ABC analysis also I think was the like idea given by Mehta ji. So Mehta ji has contributed a lot of ideas. He asks questions and then we find answers. Okay, now I want to show you the compare files. Let me come to the compare files. Then I'll go to one more software. This I've shown you ex exactly the data available in Excel. Now I'm going to pick up what is called as Invoice 2016. Okay, now I want to do what is called as analysis compare files. Comparative analysis. There are so many types of comparison I can do. I'm going to do comparison based on the file. For example, I want to do comparison of the opening balances based on the ledger names between the opening balance and the closing balance. I can use this function to do it. I got invoice 2017, which is here. Okay. Now, what is that I want to compare? 
first let's get the criteria right i want to find out the performance based on the customer number i got the customer number i want to find out what are the sales which has been made for each of the customer number i'm going to select the amount okay this is what so it means at one shot i should be able to pay, total the invoices for 2016 as per the customer number and give me the comparison and the difference also now tell me in excel can i do this our friends will answer yes in excel anything can be done now the question is how much time will it take for you to do this sir? and are we able to do it much faster here yes. i think the result has come yeah i think it has gone to this yes now if you see here i got the result here what that it tells me for customer number 10,000 last year we sold three this time we sold five the difference is two okay like that it gives me complete analysis for each of this it also now i want to find out which of the customers where the major difference is there so i found this customer okay between 2016 and 2017 there is a significant uh, change so it depends on how you are computing this now i want to find out let's say i apply zero here so what does it show these are the customers who bought last year who did not buy this year similarly if i apply zero here what does it show it also tells me that these are customers who didn't buy last year but they were added current year now just see the type of analysis you can perform using this okay the type of mis and value addition you can provide to your client okay this is about ecat now let me let's summarize i think we have gone through the whole thing yeah i want to show the last one which is the benford law let's complete this then i think we'll move forward to the next one uh, benford law for the benford law let us pick up the file which has got maximum number of transactions which is the sales transactions now look at benford law and let's look at how we can do it this should be available in analysis benford law one minute let's see so i don't remember where i've kept it let's see when well, huh, it should be in statistics yes we moved it to statistics yes benford law now you don't know benford law just select simple thing is i think narsimhan also explained now there's no meaning in doing for the invoice number i do based on for benford law the value should be random and should be numeric okay it should not be controlled which means i give check number in one series invoice number one one series that i cannot do benford law okay by default assume let's look at the result and see what i get generate See, in a few seconds i get the result what it does is it computes the sales as per the first digit and for the first digit what are the number of sales generally i would have assumed based on the average that it should be one let's see if i can magnify this no okay now here if you see i've got one generally as per the benford law it will 30.1 percent here it's actually 13.4 percent as for the second digit sales value starting with 17 points it should be actually 17.6 but actually 15 percent so this is how i can compute in what way can i use the benford law i can use it for a pattern analysis if somebody has done a fraud he has entered lot transaction let's say 9595 so you see nine starting with nine it should be only 4.6 percent here it's actually 1.3 percent if somebody has created a lot of transactions within the limit then you find the benford, after the benford law that value would have gone up then you can do double click and find out all the transactions which happened and do further analysis you can also use it for pattern analysis because you compute the benford law for a one year do the benford law for the next year and do a comparison and find out the pattern whether things have changed compared to the last year now this is as far as our ecat is, uh, ECAT is concerned so i've given you a quick overview of what are the functions which are available now this gives you a list of all the functions which are available now if you see now just look at the functions i have just sort uh, this one selected based on the functions okay now i just picked up the f so what are the number of functions i have 374 functions are available so for example in curate how many functions are there in curate i just go and select based on the curate okay so these are the functions between 69 functions on curate how many are there let's say in analysis analyze okay there are about 71 functions in analyze now you see get get an idea Classifier, Benford law. So you can become an expert in data analytics by using this function. And all these functions take less than five minutes for you to master. Once you know the tools, depending on the need, like a commando, use the tools which is required. Okay. Now let's close this. Now I just want to do, do a quick analysis. Now this also I think we have done. Yes. Now I need ten minutes and then I'll go to the question and answers and have to complete my presentation. No, this I don't require. Yes. Now let me come back. Yes, what I wanted you to do was and show you come back to Excel. Now, these are the functions which I'm going to show you one more software called as TCAT. TCAT is a software for exporting data from 
tally to excel now many times you find you want data from tally you export from tally it doesn't come in a structured format the value numeric value doesn't come in numeric the date doesn't come in date so and there are a lot of gaps between the transactions you find you are not able to apply the excel functions so in this case what we do is we provide you simple options for you to export the masters and the transactions whether it's accounting inventory cost center or payroll and you can also get various gst related transactions master reports you can get various types of reports okay let me start this now these are all the functions that are available now if you see here also we get configure document what a function i performed i can also log i can also get excel log i can also get activities log all the functions in ecat also is available it tell me all the functions which are performed what time the fun function is performed so you have assigned to your staff they come with a laptop and they have to show it to you then you can clearly know what function was performed then we can find between two functions why there is so much time taken so you can you make your expense analysis about the audit test and then give them the list and then you can go through this you can also view this in excel so this becomes a part of your audit record which means it also helps in documenting the audit test you performed so these are all the functions available i'll just show you maybe four or five functions here i'm just taking now i have picked up tally now here i have picked up a sample data for 2012 and 2013 now if i go to dss ah uh, now it gives me the it should be able to give me statistics that not keep 990 which is it gives me the complete information okay now what i would like to do is i would like to export now here i come back to ticket now here if you see i want to pick up the general info now for the purpose of documentation now i got company info company features etc as a part of my audit documentation first i said alter prepares i prepare this information see i am able to run the query and information in two clicks so what are the features are enabled in tally i get to know what are the system info where it was performed what is the starter info how it was given what are the license info this i am running on demo it works on demo version also education version also what are the company features which are enabled in software okay and what are the company info which is given everything i get at one shot let me go to another interesting aspect same thing i come to ticket i want now here i'm just showing the master info <coughs> now here i want to pick up all the these are the accounting masters i want okay i want the expense ledger ledger groups all the things i want i can also get for inventory cost center etc i say okay now can i export this from excel you can also export this to sorry export now just see the beauty i want to get all this ledger which means all the expense ledgers from tally which are defined i get this in one shot including closing balances in tally mine is supposed to be debit okay so based on this i can actually decide okay what are the expenses which are there which are the expenses are higher what are the area i want to audit this itself i can convert as an audit plan or program and then write what are the type of tests i want to perform similarly group configuration for example which are head of account the bill wise is set for which account cost center is set for which sublet is available is it a revenue item does it affect gross profit like that i can do various types of configuration is set in tally i can get it one shot similarly ocho types what are the ocho types which have been created what are the numbering is it automatic or manual i can get does that ledger uh, ocho type affect the stock is it a manufacturing journal is it a tax invoice all this information i get in one shot similarly have the ledger groups like that i can get all the masters at one shot for everything now i want gst related ledgers in this there will be nothing because this pertaining to 12 13 okay so let's come to queries now if you look at query there are automatic queries which are available you want to pick up ledgers where the opening balance is zero and the closing balance is zero or opening balance is zero or closing balance is zero like that you can do various types of analysis okay this query now let me show you one important thing which is the i want to extract the transactions from the day book now we said we saw that 1490 transactions there by default is picked up 1412 to 313 2013 i got transactions narration yes i got everything i just say okay now the 990 transactions it means all the transactions of all the ledgers i about i am able to export and see it in one page now you can export from the day book also from tally and see the result you are getting here okay now what is the software doing now see we already got the result now if you see here all the data is formatted correctly okay which means totally 2506 rows are there 2005 if you remove the header now i just apply excel i am exporting excel 
Now I just want to see the data is correct. Just go here month by they can see all the data has come correctly and therefore it's formatted correctly. Now here I want to pick up based on the ledger name. I can go and pick up based on the ledger name. I want to pick up, let's say, there are something called a go down rent. I see, I've got this particular go down rent. I want to see what are the transactions which happened. I can get all the transactions which happened. Okay, the rent which has been paid, I can get to know. Month wise, I can do the analysis, which means I can do a complete ledger scrutiny using this software. I want to pick up what are the transactions where the journal entries have been passed. Okay, I just say journal. I pick up the all the journal entries and it gives me in one shot. Okay, now I want to pick up what are the sales. I can pick up the sales, which means I can do a detailed analysis based on this. I think one of a friend, uh, Venkat, Venkateshan Murli from Chennai had written that he's got some 30,000 transactions. Based on the narration, he's doing a lot of analysis. Okay, this is what you can do, which means now if you see, I've got debit transactions. I can also do bill wise transactions, ledger watches. Ledger watches means for one debit, one credit. You pick up cash transactions, bank transactions, bank summary like that you can extract. You can also extract the trial balance. Let's say I want ledger with groups. Now you want to prepare schedule three. Now I don't percentage. I want opening balance transactions, parent closing balance, etc. Now see, I'll be able to get the trial balance from tally. Now see how it's formatted. Name, parent, primary group, opening debit, opening credit. It gives me all the information. Okay. So the, import, the mo most important benefit of using this is you are able to do a analysis, which means you are able to get the data of the masters and the transactions in a structured way, so you can do further analysis. Now you got query masters. This is a, uh, this one. What is that? Query masters list of ledgers, voucher types. Now you got transactions pertaining to inventory, all the masters, everything is available. I just want to show you one thing, which is let's say report not reports okay analysis now in tally i think you got audit and compliance features okay now you got account secured of doing there all the things are available i just say select all and say okay now i see all the data which is available in tally i should be able to get the audit features which are showing in tally for each of them i've run now you see it becomes a part of my documentation record what are the transaction which have been squared out during the year okay what are the transaction which there are no transaction during the year what are the transactions which I have to verify? I can prepare my audit program based on this. What are the tables? Okay, I can get like this. Similarly, let's say in reports, there's one more thing. Analysis, I can also have audit. There is something called exceptions. Okay, now I got negative ledgers, all the things. All the things I can get at one shot. I just say, okay, click. See, all this information is just exported. And not only that, it creates automatically index sheet. This becomes a part of your audit documentation. The auditor prepares. So you prepare the audit steps based on the exceptions you found. Okay, verification balance payable, not used, negative ledger. Why this ledger is a negative? So you can write your remark or prepare a separate sheet for each of them. Okay, now you got negative stock. You also got pending items. Like that, you'll be put highest, lowest transactions. You remember, I, talk, I talked about the maximum variance factor. Tally also, I got similar one. Okay, transactions are done on a holiday. Like that, all these exceptions which are available now, you see. For the fixers also, you get with additions and deletions. Okay, old you receivable, old you payable, all these transactions information. If there are email IDs, you can get also the email IDs. Now here nothing is entered. You can get the address. Accounts open only during the current year, which means you can get everything at one shot. You also got various types of reports, register, sales register, purchase register. You can perform trend analysis like that. So the idea I wanted to convey was that if you have got data analytics software. Depending on your need, you can perform analysis required. There's one more software called the Equally Soft. This is software for importing data from Excel templates into Tally. Okay, you can also convert directly the bank statement. For example, I got the bank statement. I can open the bank statement in Excel and then enter the corresponding ledger, import it at one shot. Not only that, I can also import sales, vouchers, etc. So first I have got ready-made templates for master's vouchers, and then based on that, I input the data and then import it. I validate it. And then I can import into tally. Okay, this gives you a complete summary of. We also got recording, which you can see. What I want to give you was the idea using data analytics, using data analytics tools, the data analytics becomes much more easier and simpler. Okay, let me just come to my close of my presentation. Let's see. Then we'll take up the questions. Okay, this is what we talked about use cases. I've given you an idea. What is this eCat all about? Adding the MS Excel software, easy to use, simple to learn, look and feel of MS Excel, but with the power of the database. It has more than 300 functions. 
you can perform complex analysis in a few clicks and not only that this documented it automatically why you stick at this gives you an idea now let me give you some final tips and tips in three to four minutes what are the concept of message i want to give you you cannot use yesterday's tools and expect to be successful or relevant today or tomorrow this is one important thing second continuous learning and constant evolution is imperative for professionals today and every day now just remember this now we have been many of our young cas are affected by covid and their little apprehensive pessimistic about what's going to happen i thought this is a quote for them a bird sitting on the branch of a tree is not worried about the strength of the branch of the winds it has confidence in its wings similarly as cas i'm sure we have got the knowledge skill sets and the competencies which should help us to tide over any crisis we are not worried about livelihood we are concerned with how we can protect livelihoods and create livelihood for hundreds of our clients and their employees and our own employees and our stakeholders now if you see this is a publication the future professional accountant if you look at the key skills and the roles one of the first top skills is the data analysis now five predictions about how an accounting practice might look in future this is what they say manual data entry will be the thing of the past because systems will talk to systems there is going to be instant relationship with your clients the client says i want this immediately you are able to provide the service there's going to be proactive alerts and responses for example you are going selling to a customer who has already got a bad credit limit immediately you should be able to before the transaction completes you should be able to have proactive alert and then based on that you give the response that you are buying you are selling to this particular client whose credit is credit history is bad or he has not uh, this one what is that he has been blacklisted or something like that similarly if you are purchasing the items at a particular rate you have set up some triggers based on that it will be able to proactively tell him that generally you last time you bought at this rate now you find average rate you are paying at a higher rate or you can tell him that maybe this material is also available at this rate from this particular seller so it means you are looking at how you can be preemptive problem solver by doing this you are providing value to the client and the client is able to afford and pay bigger fees to you because he perceives value by what you are providing so cats is the road ahead for cs so data analytics and bi skills is what you need to require so we need to upskill to upscale so that we can future proof our career now look at this and uh, this is an interesting story the idea which i got yesterday we remember steven covey have written a book uh, seven habits of highly effective people and he talks about sharp and the saw and he says quite often this is used by many management experts they say if you have got to cut 10 trees and you got three hours spend maybe one or two hours in sharpening the saw and then you can cut the tree this i say is history now if steven covey was writing the book now he would say automate the saw okay now if you see the corporation earlier when the tree used to fall during the rainy season there used to be people come with a team of people used to come with axe and the road would block for the whole day now they got a automatic sawing machine they come with that particular person lorry and finish the sawing with in cut the tree measure it and then cut it in different pieces and within half an hour the complete sawing is completed so similarly you should remember it's not about sharpening the saw it's also about aut automating the saw as required so data analytics and bi skills provides hindsights that is history you also need to look at insights and foresights foresight is about the prediction of the future which i showed you as an example so thank you very much i just want to conclude because we started with the story i want to end with the story it seems <clears throat> a famous professor was giving a lecture and he had fallen sick so instead of wasting the time he recorded the lecture and sent it to the with the driver to the class and the driver told the professor cannot come today he has recorded the lecture you can listen and make notes on this second day also he was not well so he again did the recording and sent it to the class third day he was well but he said let me see how the students have reacted to my recorded lectures so he recorded the lecture sent it to the driver and about half an hour later he went to the class and he was astonished in the class his recorder was playing but no no student was there in the class each of the instead of that each of the student has left their own recorder so these recorders were actually recording the recording done by the professor now which means the information is being transmitted from the record player to the recorder Uh, if machines talk to machines why are you required now you know that as cas we have got the specific skills and that's what we need to bring to the picture there's nothing which can replace an auditor's judgment and skill and that is going to be relevant and valuable if you can bring it to the picture if you can bring it to play
I just wanted to leave with one simple analogy. Now let's look at A.R. Rahman. He's a music director. Can he play all the instruments? Maybe or maybe not. Can he play the instrument as well as his team? Maybe or maybe not. He cannot play all the musical instruments, but he is able to conceive the music in his mind, put the team in place, put the rhythm organizer, the music arranger, everything. He organizes them in sets, and each of the musician plays the music. Okay, each of the person plays the instrument. Now you can also play a piano, but will music come out of it or song come out of it? So you should know which player to use, what the skill set you need to empower them with. But as a partner or as a senior or a manager, you should know what tools to use and how these tools should be deployed effectively as a team. And that's what is most important. And as a CA, I think we are more like a music director who is able to bring out the harmony in the music and provide value to the clients. So thank you very much. I hope it was useful and it was a great learning experience for me. I hope it was also for you. This is an article reference which again accelerating analytics to navigate COVID-19 and next normal, which gives you information about uh, how analytics is actually playing a very critical role in the current age. I remember one analogy. Just let me close this. You remember the ant walking on the carpet? Assume it's an Excel. The ant is walking on the carpet. The carpet has got red, blue, and other patterns. What is that the ant can see? The ant can see red, it can see blue, it can see green, like that, it can see different. It can view different colors at different times depending on what it's walking. Now, same thing you take up a fly, it's flying on the carpet. What are the view of the fly? Now, do you think it's able to see the patterns? Same thing you take it to the next level, you look at an eagle which is flying in the sky. Now, do you think it has got a different perspective? Data analytics is all about perspective how you can move from the micro to the macro, or you can come down from the macro to the micro. As CAs, we are supposed to be architects of information. So we should be able to visualize the architecture of the information and then be able to provide insights to the management. And we cannot get insights when you are crawling like an ant in the carpet. So sometimes the tools, I'm not saying Excel is bad or any, depending on the need, use the tool which is required. Now, if you've seen the comparison, you would have seen that in some cases Excel could be good, use Excel. Some cases data analytics are required, use it. If Tally has got reporting features, it's useful, use it. So as a music director, depending on whether you need to play the Bansuri or the piano, whatever you want to play, play the music depending on the need so that overall you get music. Thank you very much. Narsimhan, over to you. Sorry, I took a little more time. No worries, sir. It was definitely worth because I think all the participants have totally enjoyed. This was actually a fun filled as well as learning session with a lot of knowledge and not just on analytics. It was learning on other aspects of life as well. Correct. So I think that is something which you always add value and I'm really, really happy for uh, bringing in that. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, Rafik, sir. So I'll quickly take a few questions. So if you could just quickly come onto the navigation screen. Uh, there are lots of uh, you know appreciations which are pouring in the WhatsApp uh, sorry in the YouTube chat. So I will probably take them towards the end and you know I'll quickly push the uh, critical questions. Welcome to the questions. Thanks for all the appreciation. Now what is important? I don't need appreciation. Thanks for all your appreciation. Now what I wanted to do is now can you bring a change in the mindset. The value of the knowledge in not having it but in using it. So if I provide, have inspired you to use your knowledge in a much better way, I'd be more than happy. And I'll be glad to help you in any way you want. All right. So, so there's a question which is pop Yeah. There's yeah. a question which is coming in front of your screen. If you could uh, just navigate there. Let me see. OK. Yes, How do I go to, which is the screen I need to navigate? OK. But you'll I, have to go back to the screen. Yeah, yeah. This one? No, screen, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Can you say some checkpoints to take an HR audit like we generally leave the, the, any audit to do it is very simple. Understand the business process rules. Understand what are the controls. Based on that, you can decide what is the checklist. I'm not going to give the checklist. Depending on the audit objective, decide the checklist. For example, recently I attended a, a, this an international course on data analytics. And this presentation was made by a medical doctor. He was talking about how you can do data analytics on medical uh, records. How you can navigate based on what are the patient utilization, hospital utilization, bed utilization. Now, what are the parameters for data analytics for that particular hospital depending on the business case? So you decide in this particular case, 
what are the key things which are important depending on the field and decide there will always be ready made checklists that are available you have to customize and use as required wonderful uh, the next question is on benford law if you can probably throw some light yeah it's a simple thing i cannot answer considering the two the, the uh, time is too short if you just search ask google group what is benford law he'll give you a lot of information the simple rule is benford law was uh, benford was a statistician was working in the uh, american department of census he discovered this by chance when he found the log papers which are there the initial papers were told not much uh, compared to the later papers which is 1 2 3 like that then he found probably the number of times people are referring to one is much higher and based on that he did the statistical formula based on that he found the number of any random population take the probability of one is actually 30% the probability is starting with 9 and 4.6%. So what you do is you apply this Benford law to any random population. So you take the Benford law statistics, it computes the actual statistics based on the value, you find out the difference. And then you do further investigation as required. Benford law gives you indicator, indication of where the problems could be. Wonderful, sir. Uh, there's another question. There's something on TCAT. Yeah, TCAT is a software which is useful primarily as I said for exporting the masters and transactions. There is also a feature for doing a GST matching, which means purchase or input credit or for the sales has been made. You can download the JSON file and uh, from the tally you can directly make the comparison and find out which are the sales uh, which are matching. For example, input credit has been taken by you or the input credit, uh, this, this one has not been uploaded by the seller. Like that you can do an analysis. You can also do that analysis. There are also a lot of tools available for this one. Yeah. Okay, Mahendra is asking, where do I get all these tools and the training? <laughs> See, there are hundreds and thousands of tools. What is important is pick up the tools which are required based on your need. Pick up what is the pain point based on your practice. You may know that specific things you want to focus on. Pick up this particular thing and start using one by one. Don't try to do a PhD on what are the tools and techniques are available. Pick up one tool. For example, I showed you something. Let's say I showed you an outlier. I showed you Pareto. You are expert in Excel. Use Excel and build up a test case. Maybe required to make up a macro for this one. Or you want to buy the tool, buy the tool and start using this. Okay, we've got 300 functions. Let's say most of customers may be using only 20 to 30% of the functions. The data analytics software could be like a buffet, which is then in a five star hotel. You don't need to eat each and everything. Pick up what you want depending on the your taste of the day. Okay, Wonderful. similarly, don't try to get research. Pick up for your area what are the tool you want, or based on your future this one needs, what is that you want to get into. Wonderful, sir. So uh, we are online courses. Maybe Narsim is also looking at that. Maybe we'll come back to you later with some specific data analytic courses where we'll customize these courses for, let's say, GST audit, internal audit, like that. <coughs> Wonderful. So there's another compliment. Thanks a lot, perhaps. Um, so this is uh, a question. There are two parts of the question. So <coughs> this is one of the question. Yeah. Okay, I got the question now. See, it's very simple. So we got one of them. Okay, whether any possibility to convert manual was See, you should know very, uh, very, very clearly what is the perspective of the software. Data analytics software, it requires the data to come to you in Excel. Now, if the data is available manually, so there are software available where you can convert from the manual format to a soft copy format. From the soft copy format, you can also read. There are robot process automation tools available from which you convert the data and get it to Excel. Then you can use the data analytics software. Data analytics software is not a data conversion software. It can purify the data, but it cannot convert the data. Okay. So the best suggestion I would give is if there's a manual invoice, unless it's a purchase invoice, go back to the uh, system and ask, okay, whether this data is available in a soft copy. Okay, if it's available in a soft copy, then get the soft copy and directly you can use it for analysis. Wonderful. This is one more uh, compliment, sir. Yeah, thank you. So I'm happy that it was useful. I spent a lot of time thinking about what could I communicate to you. Yeah. Ah, how to select the tools? Raghu Woman. Okay, let me see. Raghav. Raghav Hanuman. Okay. So how to select the tools based on the data provided, how to decide? Simple. Now for the data, which each one has their own unique way of doing the audit. So you decide if you're going to do a GST audit, based on the GST audit, what are the requirements you have and how do you do the audit? Okay, you are using Excel now. Okay, same thing if you're doing Excel, can you broad base and then expand and use the audit tools? 
Okay, like I showed you 20 functions. You can apply this to GSP audit, you can apply to internal audit, you can apply to tax audit. For example, I'm doing a tax audit. I want to pick up all cash transactions which are more than, let's say, 20,000 rupees. Or I want to pick up all purchases more than 25,000 rupees. I can use that. So depending on the need, pick up the specific functions. Wonderful. This is an, another uh, compliments to you, sir. Oh, thank you, Guru. Uh, this is my friend from Trivandrum. He's consistently attending oh, all this session. Thanks for <laughs> I'm sure you know him as well. Yes, yes. He's a great supporter and he's a user of our software also. Wonderful. All right. So this is uh, somebody also acknowledging that, yes, this is indeed practical. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Damodaran. See, I wanted to bring the trend now. You see, Narsimha has designed the course so well. We went from the concepts and then we went into Excel. Now we're getting to the next end, which is the tools. And now we go to the other high end. So like that, I think we're getting into the complete range. It's like a five-star buffet. Now, depending on the need, you pick what you want. And then decide how you want to apply it. Okay. This is a question. Is there a similar tool which can be used in SAP environment? No. See, you, uh, if you look at SAP environment, in the case of SAP, in fact, you can say it becomes tougher or it becomes easier. SAP has by default, there are two ways you can look at it. SAP has by default report writers where you can export any data which you want. For example, purchase data, any, uh, the sales data, everything. You can export into database format, tech format or Excel format. So simple thing in that case is you export the data from SAP in the Excel format or database format. In, open the data in Excel and you can do the analysis. And that's what one of my friends is doing. He, in fact, he did 10 years back. So you just export the data, sales data, which is there, and then use the data analytics software or use Excel to do further analysis. The second option is there are some data analytics software which have an integration with SAP. Okay. In that case, what it will do is it will actually read the tables depending on what you want. You want to do purchase analysis, sales analysis, inventory analysis. It can integrate, interrogate the tables and then pick up the relevant information and give you import into the data analytic tool and you can perform analysis as required. So the simpler option is where you don't need to spend too much of money, directly take SAP, use the report writer and export the data which is required in the format in which you want. Wonderful, sir. Uh, this is the latest question which has come. Is there any portal or somewhere where we can get regular updates? Okay, this I think maybe I'm jumping the gun. Narsiman, uh, uh, this one Anand that I are part of a group. In fact, yesterday only uh, we got together this one mandate from ICI to develop a publication on how CS can become virtual CF firms. And yesterday only we finalized the TOC and we shared it with the ICI. This Saturday we're going to have a video con call based on the problem in a four to six week. We will come out of the publication, which will also have reference of all the tools specific, uh, in each of these areas. Probably that could be useful. It could be publication or it could also be available. Uh, some of these software tools, everything could be mentioned. So that becomes a quick reference point. Wonderful. Sir, a uh, couple of questions coming in. How do I get this ECAT, TCAT? Okay, what I suggest is, see, these are pricing details. I don't want to use this forum because this was knowledge sharing. So what I suggest is you have got my email ID. Uh, this one, I think you can just send it to rafeq at wingcat.com. You can send me the query. Our sales team will get back to you on this one. Okay, we kept the pricing very low and most of it is affordable. You can just get try it out. And uh, oh, uh, uh, thank you very much. All right. Yeah, there is an option for reconciliation between the GSTR 2E and GST record. But the problem is we have done it, our development team has done it, but you're not really tested with actual live data. So it'd be great, I think, if you can buy it and then test it, or maybe we can give a beta version, you can test it out. Thanks, Nikhil, for your question. Yeah. So I think uh, that's about it, sir. So we have almost come to thanks, the end. Yogiraj, uh, for, thanks, Yogiraj, with the, thank Yogiraj Navle for his, uh, his compliments. Thanks a lot yes, for, Narsimha, for the uh, this one opportunity. I was a little tensed in this and how do I present depending on the time, but I'm really glad that everything went up well. And thanks for this opportunity. Yeah, and sir, they're asking uh, your email address and contact uh, coordinates. How can they reach yeah. out to you? No, I think so, probably what you can do is I can you just add it in the this chat window. You have my email. I address. probably do that. Yeah. I will just add it in the oh, chat window oh, how you can yeah, uh, reach out to sir. Yeah, yeah, you can. This and those who are interested can get back to me because this is not a marketing show. This was primarily to share knowledge on how data analytics could be used. I just use my tools because I spent more than 10 years in developing these tools. Use these tools or use whichever tools is required. 
wonderful so i i thank all of them for uh, attending this session so this session is uh, across a little more than 2 hours uh, but i think a lot of information is there and lot of uh, knowledge was shared so first of all uh, sincere thanks to rafik sir for always uh, you know uh, giving us the right direction and uh, he not only gave a perspective of analytics i think he went beyond that he gave a perspective of life how to look into life beyond covid and how we should approach these opportunities i and i wish and hope that all the participants and the listeners make the best use of it and since this is available in youtube and this is going to continue to be there in the youtube channel Uh, feel free to always you know revisit this whatever questions and clarifications are there on that note thank you so much sir so the participants we will uh, meet tomorrow again at 11 am and tomorrow is going to be yet another exciting session and tomorrow session is on power bi you know one of microsoft's uh, flagship product on analytics uh, which uh, they've been flaunting since a good number of years and excel is eventually evolved into you know what's called as power bi and we have a speaker from mumbai who's joining us so we will listen to him uh, tomorrow at 11 until then i hope you're enjoying it thank you so much stay connected stay safe bye bye thank you namaste bye